burning issue, the Lusaka Ndola duo carriageway. Recently, um, ministers gathered in Ndola and signed this agreement. It's a concession agreement for a consortia called Macro uh, Ocean Investment to do the Lusaka Ndola duo carriageway, the Luansha Fisenge Masangano 45 kilometer uh, rehabilitation. This matter has raised a lot of concerns um, to the effect that my dear brother, Kasonde Mwenda from the EFF, has proposed that there should be a public protest march. Um, and I think he has given out the details. What are the concerns around this road? I'll start by quoting UPND's own researcher. Um, uh, my dear brother Oliver Shalala Sepiso, he has written numerous articles about this. He was campaigning during the tender process when the tender was uh, given out last year up to the time of last month uh, that uh, it should be given to a group called Velos. Remember Velos uh, is owned by a Zambian businessman, uh, Diego Casilli, who is associated very closely with the president. The bid failed. But Oliver, there are th certain things that he kept on writing. He tracked the entire tender process and he said, number one, this can be given to the Chinese. Number two, the Chinese wanted to get money from NAPSA and Workers' Compensation Fund. Number three, he kept on pushing that are we going to allow foreign companies to raid the treasury, to raid our pension funds. Number four, he said the scope of work, what... Velos, um, uh, Velos provided uh, and, their, you know, and their group and what Macro Ocean Investment provided and the three Chinese company. He said Macro Ocean Investment provided something uh, of reduced scope and was therefore very expensive for Zambia, even if the price looked far lower, about $600 million, while the, the Velos Consortium provided uh, a price of $700 million. So you have all seen the turnaround by this so-called researcher for UPND, who's now telling us that uh, actually the Lusaka and Dollar Joe Carriageway is the best thing that has happened to our government. Let me start with that. We have raised serious objection. First, what did the PF want to do? The PF wanted to do this road at $1.2 billion. What was the scope? The PF was going to do a dual carriageway from Lusaka to Ndola. They were going to do frontage roads, those roads that accompany the main uh, uh, highway, frontage uh, roads up to Ndola. They were going to make the Luansha uh, Fisenge Masangano uh, road a dual carriageway. They were going to build industrial cities um, at Chibombo and 
um, at Masaiti. They were going to do bypass and ring roads at Kabwe, at Kapiri. They were going to do um, a five-story building for road development agency in Ibex Hill in Lusaka. They were going to do um, upgrade the bridges. You know, we have bridges at, I think, Mulungushi in Kawe and another bridge before you reach uh, Ndola. So it was $1.2 billion. But um, this process started in 2017. And there was a strong objection by 2019 from the Treasury and Minister of Finance, Honorable uh, Margaret Monakatwe. In, together with the International Monetary Fund and World Bank, Honorable Margaret Monakatwe did a debt sustainability uh, exercise to ascertain how much Zambia owed foreign in, uh, entities to consolidate the debt that we have and to have an understanding how debt distressed we were if we could pay this foreign debt. So it was very imperative when the debt sustainability initiative was done, Zambia was found to be debt distressed by 2019. So government and cabinet made cardinal decisions. Number one, all projects that were 80% and below were canceled, were stalled or, or, or postponed that will be done in the future when the fiscus improves. Number two, all funding, all loans that were piped to be obtained could even have been at negotiated or settled stage where also all of them in the pipeline were cancelled. The Lusaka and, dual, Lusaka and dollar dual carriageway, because of its importance, was left to stand, but it was scaled down. They said all the extra development that were proposed amounting to $500 million should be dropped. So the two industrial cities at uh, Masaiti and Chibombo were dropped. The five-story building um, in Ibex Hill was dropped. Oh, by the way, there was 160 kilometers of township roads in Kabwe, in Luansha, and in Dola and Kapiri. The township roads amounting to 160 uh, kilometers were also dropped. The total was... Um, uh, $500 million. So the road project by 2019 was $700 million. So ignore the propaganda from UPND who keep on insisting that the PF wanted to procure this road at $1.2 billion because by 2019 the road was at $700 million and government made these announcements. You can go to the records, you will find that the road was pegged at $700 million. What were the scope? The scope was the same Lusaka dollar as the dual carriageway with frontage road, with bypasses in, in Kabwe and um, uh, Kapiri, and the Lusaka, I mean the Luansha, uh, Fisenge, Masangano, road 45 kilometers was also going to remain a dual carriageway. What is our objection with this road? It's extremely expensive because the scope has been reduced. First of all, they've removed the frontage road. Secondly, they've reduced the width of the road from 11 meters to nine meters each way, meaning they've canceled one lane, which was supposed to be provided. They've also made the Luansha uh, 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 Fisenge Masangano Road for mayor rehabilitation. Remember the PF wanted it, dual carriageway. So the, the, the road is very expensive under the UPND because of the reduced scope. And this has also been asserted very strongly by Oliver Shalala who wrote all these numerous articles comparing the two bids. Here is a big one in the room. The investment by NAPSA, National Pension Scheme Authority, and by Workers' Compensation Fund Board, who are supposed to provide up to $400 million to these projects to give these uh, three Chinese companies to build and operate the road for the next 22 years. Our objection is very simple. I saw um, a, a arguments that are not really informed. We are not saying NAPSA cannot invest. We are not saying Workers' Compensation Fund Board doesn't do investment. 
I have repeatedly stated that NAPSA has a special purpose vehicle that handles its investment, NAPSA Investments. NAPSA has shopping malls, it has made numerous investment, investments in property, and recently Zambians will know that we have an ultra-modern uh, bus terminus in Livingstone. It was purely funded by NAPSA, and NAPSA is now currently operating it. That's also uh, uh, some form of a PPP because NAPSA entered into an agreement you know, with Livingstone uh, City Council, and they will, they've financed it, they've built it, they designed it, and they'll operate it for a period, and it will be transferred later to Livingstone uh, City Council. So NAPSA can invest. We should make it very clear because we noticed some people trying to teach us basic economics. No, NAPSA, like any pension fund, can invest. So can Workers' Compensation Fund Board. What is our objection? Is that this government has picked a contractor under what is being purported as a public-private partnership agreement. Is this a public-private partnership agreement? We are objecting to the structure of this PPP. In a normal PPP, the public entity gives a concession to a private entity. The private entity, it's usually done under BOT, build and operate and later transfer such a project. The role of the private partner is first to design, to look for financing for this project, to then build and then to operate the, 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 the partnership for a period, the, I mean the, the actual project, for a period of, as agreed in the concession agreement, as a concessionaire, they can be given five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, 50 years, it doesn't matter. But they operated during that period. And where is our objection? It's very simple. The three private companies, so-called private companies, number one, they are public companies, they are state-owned enterprises from China. We should make it very clear. They are state-owned enterprises from China. They could be here registered as private entities, they are not. We know the motivation by government is to give these Chinese companies that then Chinese companies can go back to China, obtain financing from either their development banks or their financing entities, bring it and then build this road. You and I know that that's a tall order. It will not happen. First of all, President Hakainde Ichilema and his government have distanced themselves from China. We've had guests in the Treasury Secretary, Madam Janet Yellen, who came here and insulted China at the footsteps of State House. We have a um, managing director from the International Monetary Fund who was also here during the same period and also issued disparaging remarks against China, alleging that China was standing in the way of Zambia's debt restructuring program and China was refusing to either cancel our debt, restructure it, or you know, forgive our debt. Those remarks are just a, an accumulation of the frosty relationship between uh, Zambia and China. So these three companies led by AVIC are state-owned enterprises. Their boards are in China. Their bosses are in China. They are deployed here to do work, usually project financing. When China releases money for your infrastructure, they will ensure that you get a Chinese firm to get their money. They will not allow when you are doing a power project with $1 billion, you give it to an American firm or a Swedish firm. They have a selfish interest, like any other creditor, like any other lender, that their interests are secured. So the Chinese firms, dotted across the world, have been put for those purposes. China's funding of its various um, international projects, including the Belt and Road Initiative program. That's why these companies are here. So we've given the Chinese contracts to go to China to get the money from China. It won't happen. 
until this government and President Akainde Ichilema go to a large extent to resolve, repair, rehabilitate the relationship we have with China. Do not believe the, the, the assertions that we have a warm relation with China. No, we do not have by the examples I have given. So what is then the option? Because an agreement has been signed. They've given this contract to this macro uh, ocean investment, which comprises these three companies, Chinese companies. The next target is NAPSA. NAPSA has a lot of money. So does Workers' Compensation Fund. Our call was that government should then have given NAPSA this project. NAPSA is going to hire professional contractors, including even macro in ocean investment can be hired to do the road. Within three years, they can be paid. They move away. They are paid for their work and NAPSA can, through its investment, run the road for the next 22 years. In this case, I have been arguing that they want to use NAPSA as a lender. The Chinese have got this contract. And now they want our public funds, our public money. It's your money, my money. NAPSA is an act, is established by an act of parliament. Its board is appointed by the president. It's our entity and institutions. And the money it holds is your money. You as a pensioner, you as a member who contributes to NAPSA. So why would we like to give such huge monies to the Chinese firms who will build First, they are supposed to design, they're supposed to look for financing, they're supposed to build the infrastructure and operate it for the period of 22 years. Why should NAPSA give them that opportunity? Well, people are arguing that it's investment by NAPSA. NAPSA should lend that $300 million you know, uh, as a debt investor, meaning that debt is an investment and NAPSA will be paid with interest now. NAPSA will be paid with interest, very little money. What is expected is for NAPSA with the capacity it has, for Workers' Compensation Fund with the capacity it has, if this government is honest, they should then give NAPSA and Workers' Compensation Fund this project. The, between them, they can hire any contractor, whether it's Velos, whether it's China Joe, whether it's China Jiangxi, who can do this road. For a period of three years, NAPSA can pay them, they can go away, and NAPSA can even partner currently like it is with National Road Fund Agency. NAPSA lent some money to RDA so that they could finish the Kitwe Ndola, uh, Kitwe uh, uh, Chingola dual carriageway. And RDA through NRFA is paying back through the tolls, through the tolling that um, are collected. Where is another issue? Ladies and gentlemen, we want to work with Alessa. There have been feasibility studies, some full scale, some scope were very uh, not extensive, but there is a finding that this road can generate up to $100 million a year. This is a study that informed government to set up these public tolls that are raising a lot of money for Lusaka and Dollar Geo Carriageway. I think it's raising between 20 to 30 million dollars. It could even be more. And remember, we've never increased the toll fee of 20 kwacha. The 20 kwacha from 2017 up to now, six years later, we are still paying 20 kwacha despite inflationary trends, despite the changes that have occurred, the exchange rate, and all. We are still paying that 20 kwacha. The, Macro investment will charge a commercial rate. They will not charge you 20 kwacha. They will probably charge you 100 kwacha or 200 kwacha for use of that road. Why do I say so? They've even in their design included more new tolls so that the frequency of collecting money could be higher. They've even again included two new way bridges so that the frequency of collecting money can be, uh, 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 you know, the revenue streams can be upped quickly and the return can be done. I was looking at their documents. They hope that they can pay back NAPSA or uh, Workers' Compensation Fund in a period of nine years. I bet you that they can even pay back that money within a short period of five years when they get it from NAPSA. 
As we begin to conclude, our objections remain the same. This is not a PPP, it's masquerading as a public-private partnership. We know what a public-private partnership is. We have various examples of public-private partnerships in Zambia. They're not strange to us. The hope of giving a foreign entity uh, to construct uh, and operate this road for a period of 22 years, I think has offended many Zambians. There's no justification for that. It actually flies in the face of the, Zam of the Public Procurement Act of 2020 that insists that all large expenditure should be done by, uh, uh, by Zambians and by citizen-owned companies and to a large extent by locally registered companies, even if they are foreign. Um, our, our concern on, um, uh, on NAPSA is that NAPSA's board is appointed by the president through IDC. NAPSA's board is, um, uh, and even executive directors are appointed by the president. So they are being bullied to make these decisions. These are not independent decisions. These are not independent financial institutions, decisions of NAPSA and Workers' Compensation Fund. They are not. Um, they are being forced to provide financing to these entities that will profit in a lifetime that money they would never make anywhere else in the world. We think that this contract in its current form should be canceled. We have looked at the commercial agreement that was signed on 28th February uh, 2023 in Indola. That commercial agreement is saying they should go and look for financing. But look at the Joseph by all the ministers involved, how they keep on saying the financing will come from NAPSA and Workers' Compensation Fund. There's even an assertion that they, they'll look for some small money. They're trying to reduce the risk where the bulk of the money is obtained locally and they are forcing NAPSA to provide that money. If we are sincere, ladies and gentlemen, ZNS has the best construction equipment in Zambia. Many people do not know that. The last five years of, uh, of the PF in government heavily invested in, uh, uh, in equipment at Zambia National Service. You can get them a partner, you can get them a consultant, you can even, they can collaborate with RDA in which this road can be done. We have local contractors that have better equipment than even the Chinese, in case you didn't know. So there is just no commitment to uh, give this project to local people, to ZNS, or to do it in a manner that benefits both NAPSA Workers' Compensation Fund and the local economy. This money we are giving to a foreign entity uh, is not making sense. That's why we have become a battle of joke. Just Google Lusaka and Dollar Geo Carriage Way. And we have made news internationally, that a Chinese firm will borrow from Zambia to do their roads. That's a lead story that is, I mean, some business story that is occurring across the country. So, Webe Kalachalo, our campaign continues. This road, in the manner it's been procured, it's been procured in a manner that's not transparent, that's not objective, that's not making sense. The target of NAPSA, there, there's even now some talk that NAPSA will also become an equity partner that they'll give, give it 10% shareholding. All those are just jokes. All those are just not patriotic uh, decisions. Let the right thing be done. And for me, what uh, 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 my dear brother Kasonde from EFF is doing should be sustained if, if he's Protest this week doesn't succeed. Maybe all opposition leaders should gather and do this protest. All citizens should plan for a mass rally against this procurement. We can't have decisions that are being made to benefit foreigners and foreign entities. We have seen consistently President Akainde Ichilema not doing what is required, where he's favoring foreign entities in everything he's doing. There's no incentives for local people. Our contractors, suppliers, and uh, consultants are not paid up to now under the guise that uh, uh, is auditing. And that doesn't apply to entities like First Quantum or Mamba Collieries, who are just being paid, or CEC, who are just being paid as their debts 
arise, but to you and me and local businesses, they are suffering the brunt of this love for foreigners. And many people know that uh, we have worked with the Chinese. We love the Chinese. We support the Chinese. We support Russia. China is one of our best friends, but the objections we are raising are that they want to use China, in this case, for selfish, corrupt reasons. So thank you very much for listening to us and good day until we are back. God uh, bless you. God bless our country. God makes this country prosper and succeed. Good day.